Hello everyone, my name is Grace. I'm going to be going over kind of like a quick little thing talking about uh, Professor Sherlock's, you know, class and kind of like my tips and tricks to help out with things. Um, I'm going to add my phone number on here because I actually tutor this subject. At least I tutor... Oh, that's not my phone number. <laughs> can't believe I just messed up my own phone number. Um... Alright, 609-845-514, and that's my phone number. Um, feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, I, taught, I tutor high school chemistry just as like a private tutor. Um, so I'm pretty well up to date on these things, and I think I do like a decent job of explaining it. Um, I'm not really good at making videos, so I might do a horrible job explaining it. But I'm going to try my best here, and hopefully this is maybe a little bit helpful. Okay. There's my boyfriend asking how's homework. He always spells it wrong every single time he says it. Um, <laughs> Alright. So, first thing we're going to be talking about is sig figs. Um, this stands for significant figures. Um, basically, this just tells us how many numbers in a, in a number um, are significant to us. And when we're talking about significant, we're talking about numbers that have meaning to them. Right, um, so I'll do kind of like an example here. So we'll look at 2,305.52 um, versus 2,000. So these numbers have nearly the same value to them. Um, if you're thinking about like the magnitude of it and everything, this is 300 off, but it's 2,000. So talk about the magnitude. They're not too far off, but this is way more accurate, right, than this one. And that's because it has so many significant figures, and this one has so little significant figures. This only has one significant figure, and this has one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six significant figures. So significant figures basically tells us how accurate something is, and we need to use this in calculations and in lab work in order to make sure that we have um, the correct numbers being used and that we're not over predicting things or under predicting things. Um, so that's basically what it helps with, right? Um, so he has a few rules in helping us distinguish what sig figs are, but I have some rules of my own that help me. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about is that if there are no zeros, every single number is significant, right? So let's look at a number here. Oh, that's not how those work. <laughs> 2,300... That uh, has a zero in it. Okay, uh, restarting. Um, <laughs> 561.2, right? This has no zeros in it, so we know that this has one, two, three, four significant figures, right? Um, the next one is that if there's a zero in between these numbers, then that zero is significant, right? So if we have 502.7, this is also going to be four sig figs because the zero is in between the two numbers. So now when we're dealing with zeros that are on the left or the right of significant dig digits, this is where things become difficult. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to talk about is when there are no decimals present. Um, so when there's no decimals present, let's look at a number like 2002. Uh, some of you guys might be born then. I was not. I was born in 2003. Um, a lot of you guys are probably freshmen here, so you guys are probably like, 2002, those are like old people. Uh, don't make me feel old after making this video, please. Um, anyways, um, <laughs> so this would have one, two, well, we know that those zeros are in between, um, so I'll actually make this 2,000. Um, there's only going to be one significant figure here because there's no decimal place, right? So if there's zero, if there's a zero to the left of the significant figure, um, explaining this right okay let me restart that um so if we look at a number like 2000 what i like to do if when there's no decimal um you go from the right to left and whenever you reach one significant figure you start counting right so this one has, all right, we keep going, zero, 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 zero. Okay, we got one, right? So it's one significant figure. 
Um, now let's do like a bigger number. We'll do five, six, zero, two, four, seven, zero, zero, zero. I don't even think I could say that number. <laughs> it's not that big. Um, so I'm starting from the right here, going to the left. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, first significant figure. So we can start counting. One, two, three, four, zero in between. So it counts. Five, six. So it's going to be six significant figures. All right, so that's when there's no decimal place. So now let's talk about when there is a decimal place present. So let's look at a number like 0 0.0527. Um, you go the opposite way. So when there's a decimal point, you want to go this way. All right, so we'll go this way. There's a zero that doesn't count. Oh, we had a first significant figure. One, two, three. So this has three sig figs. All right, now let's also look at something that's a bigger number. We'll use 2,560. I'm using a lot of sevens, twos, and fives here. So <laughs> I'm not a very creative person, it seems. It's literally the only numbers I've been using. Um, point zero six two, um, zero, right? So there's a decimal point present. So what that means is that we start automatically from the left side and you go, oh, oh my goodness, there's no zero. So we can already start counting. That's real fun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I, did I count that right? I literally didn't even count right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight significant figures <laughs> so that's my way of doing it right so just as a review for sig figs if there's no zeros present you count everything if there's a zero in between you still count everything because it counts as a significant figure if there's no decimal place present you start from the right and then you go to the left and once you reach your first significant figure you keep counting here's another example here you start from the right go to the left you start counting here and all of those numbers will be significant when there is a decimal point present, you start from the left and go to the right, so you're going the opposite way this time, and as soon as you reach your first significant figure, you start counting. Same goes for here. Right. Okay, so that is all I have for sig figs. Um, I'm going to do put up some like practice problems in there because I think it's good to get some practice. Um, so just like write out the number of sig figs or... Um, this is really just kind of like on your own time once i have these written out you guys can just like pause the video um all right so let's do and we'll do um 27 Um, these should be pretty quick questions, so it shouldn't be too much of a hassle for you all. Alright, so I would say if you guys want to pause the video now, um, I'm going to write out the answers in just a second here. Alright, so I'll also explain my method of madness here as I'm going through. So I see a decimal point, so I'm going to be moving from left to right, right? Okay, so decimal point, left to right. First significant figure, second, third, fourth, fifth. Five sig figs. Alright, next one. No decimal point I see, so we're going to go from right to left. Right to left, right to left, zero, zero, five. All right, that's our only sig fig, so we have one sig fig. Cool. All right, next one. See a decimal point, so we're going to be going from left to right. Left to right, first sig fig, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. Nine sig figs. All right, so I see another decimal point, so we're going to be going from left to right, so left to right, no sig fig, no sig fig, no sig fig, bam, first sig fig, one, two, three, we got three sig figs. Decimal point again, we're starting here, one, two, three, four, four sig figs. All right, cool. So now I'm going to be going over... Um, 
scientific notation because I think that this honestly goes along with sig figs. Um, I think he has kind of expected that we have some background knowledge of this, um, but I think that this goes along with the sig figs because it's numbers in chemistry. So I'll go over that now. Now let's go over scientific notation. So there's many different ways that people will try to teach you this. So I'll show you an example of what scientific notation looks like, right? So we'll do, and then we'll do a bigger number. We'll do six, my favorite number. Oh my God, there's number 6.0. Oh, if I could memorize it, that'd be great. <laughs> 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I picked this number because we're going to be seeing a lot. That's Avogadro's number that's like, a mole a mole is this right we talked about that before in class um but there's often times where teachers will be like oh just move this decimal point over this many times to this way that's not the way that i think of it um personally i don't but what they're trying to say there is if it's a negative number you move it to the left but it kind of gets confusing because sometimes you have to bring a number like this into scientific notation that same method doesn't apply you know you don't move it one way you don't move it the other way um because then things flip and it gets confusing right so the way that i like to remember is that a negative exponent that's not what i want so a negative exponent means that it is a number that is going to be less than one and then a positive exponent means that a number is going to be greater than one Right, so what that means is that a number like this, um, it's actually going to be a smaller number. So in order to make a number smaller, you have to move the decimal place this way, right? Because if we move it this way, it's becoming a much bigger number, even if we move it this way once. It's turning into 23. We don't want 23. We want a smaller number because the exponent is smaller. So we go 1, 2, 3. And all those places in between, you put zeros, right? So this will become 0 0.0023. And then you can take get rid of the times 10 to the third. I'm not going to move this over 23 times, but you can see that in order to make this number bigger, you'd have to move it 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 blah. Add in all those zeros. He probably will not give us an example of a bigger or of a number that big. Um, but yeah. Um, so I'm going to show some examples on this. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So some examples, right? So let's talk about, and if you guys are feeling confident on this, um, feel free to pause the video and try these out as practice problems. So we're going to be going from scientific notation two um like real numbers there's an actual term for it but i forget what it's called so i'm gonna call it a real number um so we'll do three that's not three i guess i'm just sticking with two today's twos today all right i'll try to give some easy numbers in here just because i don't want you guys to have to sit there and move a bunch of numbers over um we'll do five um, the hardest part about making these videos is trying to come up with numbers off the top of your head because it's it is hard like you might be sitting here like um grace like why is this so hard for you it's literally just because i do not have a creative mind so this one's kind of a trick one that i'm throwing in there see if you guys know what that means um Okay, and then we'll do 2.7 times 10 to the... We'll do one. Also, throwing in a little bit of a trick one. Okay. So, if you guys would like to pause the video, feel free to do that now, because I'm going to be going over it in 3, 2, 1. Okay, so scientific to real. Right. Okay, so we're looking at 2.52 times 10 to the second. In order to make this number bigger, we gotta move it over this way, because that's how you make numbers bigger move the decimal to where it becomes bigger that's how i think of it don't sit there and be like left and right and right and left no 
what makes a number bigger it, it's just it just makes more sense that way but if you guys learn better doing the left right right left way go for it i have no clue how to teach that okay <laughs> so we're moving it over twice that one's really easy so we just get we don't have to add any zeros 252 cool that's good all right negative four we're going over this way because that's how you make the number smaller one two three four all righty so if you look at that we have to add three zeros so we get point zero 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 nine oh nine done all right negative five same thing we're moving it over to the way to make it smaller one two three four five we're gonna add the decimal point there and put four zeros in between all right one two three four five nine six awesome so that one's done all right now we're making the number bigger again by four so we go one two three four we're gonna add a decimal point right there and we have to add in two zeros two nine two one two um and then i like to add in the comma in there um that's just the way i like to do it. i like to write the number and then add in the comma um but yeah all right so here comes the trick ones right it's not really a trick you can just think i'm moving the decimal zero times but for those of you who don't know anything to the power of zero i'm losing my voice right now <laughs> anything to the power of zero is one so think of this as 1.90 times one or you can think how many times do i have to move the decimal over zero times Pfft, that's easy i'm gonna move it over zero times look at that answer's done cool okay so the next one is we're moving decimal over one time boop <laughs> 27 another way that you can also think of this is that anything to a power of one is going to be itself so 2.7 times 10 is 27 um that's another way that you can think of it for those quick ones like that or you can even look here be like all right moving it over once boom done all right awesome so now we are going to do um going from the real number to the scientific notation. Wow, I'm clicking so many buttons right now. Nope, don't change my pencil. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do the real number to scientific notation. So basically it's a very similar process, but you're just reversing it, right? So let's say we have something like this. Um, We'll add a decimal point there. Um, if there's no decimal point there, just add on the decimal point. It'll help you when you do it, right? So the first rule to really establish is that when you have scientific notation, you have to have a number and then decimal and then the rest of the numbers, right? You can't have a number that's like 22.52. No, you can't do that times 10 to the whatever, right? Um, you have to have just the one number in front of the decimal place right you can't have five numbers you can't have zero numbers it's always going to be one number in front of the decimal place that is just how it works i don't exactly know why and i don't also know why i keep ending every single number with 52 it's literally 2 a.m when i'm making this video so please try to ignore my insanity um let's see what time actually is it oh it won't tell me yeah it's two o'clock way to go grace um <laughs> so again we're basically reversing this order so how can i get this number to have one decimal place or one number before the decimal place right we gotta move it this way one two three cool ten to the three but you're probably thinking is this going to be a negative three or a positive three the way I like to do this is that I like to look at it from the real number and I could say, all right, well, was the real number big or small? It's a big number. It's a number greater than one. So when it starts, uh, greater than one would look like this. I always have to think about the alligator. I'm not even kidding. Like, it's really embarrassing. I'm like, which number would the alligator rather eat? The other number, right? So when it starts greater than one, the exponent is going to be positive. Um, and then we'll do an example of when it starts less than one, where the exponent would be a negative. Okay, 
So we'll do 0 0.006. I'm going to try not to do 5, 2. I'm trying to think of other numbers that exist. There's 9 and 3. Sure, that sounds good. Right, so how do we get this so that we only have one number before the decimal place? we got to move it over 1, 2, 3 times. Same thing, times 10 to the now what is it going to be? Think again. The number started less than 1, so it's going to be a negative exponent, right? All right, so hopefully that all makes sense because I'm going to do some practice. And again, feel free to pause, try it out. Um, if not, just wait until I do the explanation because it will not be long. Do not fear. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, I literally can't count. This is more for my own comedy than helping people at this point. I'm just laughing at myself right now. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to be writing out some... One, two, three, um, two, five, one, seven, three, boom. Uh, we'll do five, twenty-seven, nine hundred sixty-three, two, eight, nine. Oh, that was a big variety of numbers there. I was, I'm proud of myself for that one. So if you guys would like to, pause the video, try these out yourself, and then we will be checking them in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alrighty. So, again, what we're going to do is we're going to say how many times do I have to move this over in order to get the decimal place right here because we want number one number before the decimal place. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to get 4.63 times 10 to the 5, and then we're going to say, okay, uh, was this number small or big before? It was small, less than 1, so we'll put the negative there. Alright, next one, we're going to add the decimal point there, because that'll help us, and let's see how many times we have to move it over. 1, 2, 3, 4. Alright, so we get 2.5173 times 10 to the, I remember, what, I don't remember what the number was. 1, 2, 3, 4. Is it really only four? Okay, four. And then again, number was big, so we're gonna keep that positive exponent. Same thing here. One, two. So we get 5.37 times 10 to the second. Again, number was greater than one, so it's two. All right, here. One, two, three, four, five, nine point six, three, two, eight, nine times. 5 to the 5th number was very big, um, so we will keep that as a positive exponent. Alright, coming down here we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6, 2, 7 times 10 to the 6th, and again, number was less than 1, we make this negative. Alright, looking at this number, 1, 2, that was easy, so we do 1, 0.23 times 10 to the second. Again, number was less than 1, so we will make that a negative exponent. Okay, so that will be it for this video. Um, I'm going to make a separate video explaining how to do calculations with X or with scientific notation. Um, and yeah, so that was kind of like the basic number stuff to get to know with chemistry and with any science class. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I don't think I'll be making another video like this at 2 a.m. because I probably sound like I'm crazy. <laughs> okay, thank you all for watching, and good luck.